Hey there, GED math students or any math students. I want to take a closer look at the concept of a function. Right here, this word function, because you're going to see this show up on the GED test problem similar to this. So let's look at the first question. It says, which one of the following, I should probably put which one of the following tables represents a function? In other words, does this represent a function? Does this table represent a function? And so on. Now, I wrote over here two definitions for a function. They mean the same thing. They're just worded kind of in opposite ways. So it says, note, if all the x values are different, it is a function. That's one way to look at it. So I tend to look at it this way if the question is asking me if it is a function. And that's what it's asking us here. I tend to look at the top definition. It says which of the following represents a function. Now sometimes it'll ask you on the GED test which of the following does not represent a function. You got to be careful. You got to make sure you read the question here. And I kind of look at bullet point two if they're asking if it doesn't represent a function. So let's read bullet point two. If any of the x values are repeated, i.e. the numbers are exactly the same, it is not a function. But in reality, you can interchange these two definitions. They mean pretty much the same thing. So when you're taking the GED math test, make sure you read the question. Again, it might say which of the following represents a function, which it says here. But it might say which of the following does not represent a function. So let's just go to A. Based on the definition, do you think A represents a function? Well, let's look at bullet point one. It says if all the x values are different, it is a function. So we're only looking at the x values. Let's get rid of the y values. I really don't need them. I don't, I don't, need, I don't need them. I'm just looking at the x values. Now, there is one exception to this rule, but I don't think they'll put it on the test. I, I might go over it after this question, but I doubt they'll put it on the test. But let's, let's look at this. Are all the x values different? Are they all different? Well, this x value is negative 4, this is negative 1, this is 0, this is 4, this is 5. Yeah, they're all different. They're, they're unique numbers. I don't see any numbers repeated. So if all the x values are different, it is a function. So this is yes, this is a function. Now, so, some students get confused here. They say, they say to me, they say, Mr. Weiss, um, Negative 4 and 4 are the same number, really. Well, they're not. I mean, they're opposites of each other. And if that confuses you, confuses you, just think of a number line, right? Well, 0 is here. This is negative 4, which is, let's say, negative 4 is about right here. This is really positive 4. That positive sign's not showing. So I'll put a positive 4 over here. So if I were to plot a point at negative 4, it would be here. And positive 4 would be here. They're two distinct numbers. So don't let that confuse you. These are two different numbers, negative 4 and 4. And again, there's a plus sign here. You can put it in there if you want to. If it's not showing, you can put it in there. So the first one is a function. What about um, b? What do you think? What do you think for b? Again, if all the x values are different, it's a function. Or, let's cross out the y values for right now. Are all the x values different? No, they're not all different. These are the same. This x value is the same as this x value. So this is not a function. No, not a function, because this x value and this x value are not the same. They're repeated, so it's not a function. Again, you don't even need to look at the y values. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something um, that there's only one exception to this. I don't think this will show up. I'll, I'll go over this now since I'm dealing with this one. There is one situation where you could have the x values repeated like this. And it's still a function. That's if they both went to the same y values. If you notice, this x value goes to 6. 
and this x value goes to 9. But if, if this, for example, were 6, if both the x values went to the same number, this, then it would still be a function even though the x value the x values are not different or repeated. That I don't think that's going to happen. I rarely see that. So I wanted to throw that in there um, just in case it happens to pop up, but more than likely it won't. So again, let's, these are repeated, not a function. All right, let's look at um, C here. What do you think? You think that's a function? Let's cross out those y values. Are all the x values different? 8, 9, 10, 11, 15. Yes, all the x values are different. Yes, it's a function. Another thing is when you're dealing with function functions, you're not looking for any patterns. These numbers don't have to be in order. That, that has nothing to do with it being a function. It just has to do with if all the x values are different. What about D? Do you think D is a function? Are all the x values different? No, these are the same. This x value is repeated here and here. All the x values are not different, so no, this is not a function. So I hope that was helpful. Let's look at another problem. It says, is the following graph a function? If not, what could you do to make it a function? So is this a function, right? I wanna know yes or no again. When you're dealing with graphs and individual points, if, if the points are lined up vertically, any points, if they're lined up vertically, if you have one on top of the other, this is no. Let me just make that a little better. So if you have any two points lined up like this, vertically, not a function. Now if it's like this, if the points are lined up horizontally, like this, that's okay. But if you have any points that are lined up vertically where you have one point above another or another point below, however you want to look at it, it's not a function. So are there any points that are lined up vertically here? Let's see, there's no point. If I look at this point, there's no point above it or below it. Then I go to the next point, there's no point above it or below it. I go to this point, there's no point above it. There's no point below it. Then I go to this point, there's no point above it. But uh-oh, there's a point directly below it, right here. Right here. I mean, you can even draw a vertical line through that if you want to. It's kind of called the vertical line test. But if, you, if I draw a vertical line here, vertical means straight up and down. You can see that these two points are on top of each other right here. This is on top of this, so this is not a function. Now, let me erase this. So this piece here is making it not a function right here. Okay. <clears throat> now it says if it's not, it's not a function, not a function. What could I do to make it a function? Well, I could get rid of either this point. If I get rid of this point, then it's a function because you can go to the rest of the points and see there's no points above this or below this and no points above this or below this. It doesn't matter where the points fall. You just want to make sure you don't have two on top of each other. So to make this a function, I could get rid of this point or I could get rid of this point and that would make it a function. So let's just make sure we're clear on how to read the coordinate of the point. What's the coordinate of this point? And remember a coordinate is always x comma y. It tells you how to move to get to the point. So how many, let's look at this point here. Let's say I wanted to get rid of this point. How would I locate this point? What's the coordinates of this point? How many units do I need to move in the x direction and then in the y direction to get to this point? Well, the x is this way. So to, I'd, to get to this point, I'd have to move, let's see, seven units in the x direction and then four, five units in the y direction. So the coordinate of this point here is seven, five, right? Let me write it off to the side. 
do it over here. So the coordinates of this point here are 7, 5. Again, how many units do you have to move in the x direction? 7. And how many units do you have to move in the y direction? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this, the coordinates of this point is 7, 5. What is the coordinate of this point? Right here. What's the coordinate of this point? Well, I have to move how many units in the x direction? 7. How many units in the y direction? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what you could say is I could get rid of the point 7, 7, or I could get rid of the point 7, 5. So if, if it wanted you to be more specific and ask which point you can get, a, get rid of, instead of just crossing it out, you could say I would get rid of the point that has the coordinate 7, 7, or I could get rid of the point that has the coordinate 7, 5. And by getting rid of one of those points, this whole thing would be a function. Remember x, y, right? x, y. And these are called coordinates. Let's look at one more. It says, if the graph is a function, I meant to put is. This should say, is the graph a function? Is the graph a function? Whatever. This is worded wrong. Basically, I want to know the following. Are these graphs functions? Yes or no? Now, the way I do this is I call it the vertical line test. Vertical line test. If it passes the vertical line test, it is a function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vertical line as best as I can. I'll draw it in kind of a different color. Let's look at this first one. Is this a function? Well, I'll draw a vertical line. This is a vertical line straight up and down. If this vertical line touches the graph in green, in more than one point, it's not a function. So if you notice, if I draw this vertical line, it touches at two points. It touches the green graph at two distinct points, so it's not a function. Not a function. I'm just going to put no, not a function. Okay, this one. Now, let me be clear on this. You can draw that vertical line wherever you want. You can draw it here. You can draw it here. You can draw it here. It doesn't matter. But if there's any place where a vertical line touches the graph at more than one point, it's not a function. A little confusing. So here's kind of how I do it again. I draw. And remember, you're drawing a vertical line. You're not drawing lines like this or like this. It's got to be straight up and down. So I say to myself, how about if I draw a vertical line right, right here? It doesn't matter where I draw it. I could draw it right here. And then I say to myself, wait, this vertical line, it touched the graph here, and it also touched the graph here. It touched it at two points, so it's not a function. All right, let's go to this one here. We'll do this one next, this straight line. Is that a function? Well, let's draw a vertical line wherever we want to. I'll draw a vertical line here. How many points does this vertical line how, how many times does it touch the graph in green? Just once, right? Is it possible to draw a vertical line straight up and down that hits this green graph more than once? No, it's impossible. No matter where I put the vertical line, it doesn't matter where I put it, it only hits the green graph at one point. It is impossible to draw a line straight up and down that touches this green graph at more than one point. It's impossible. So this is, yes, a function. And I can tell you something. Whenever you have a slanted line, it's always a function. Slanted lines are always a function. What about this one here? What do you think? You think that passes the vertical line test? You think that's a function, yes or no? I would say yes here, right? Remember, you got to draw a vertical line. It's impossible to draw a vertical line that touches this graph at more than one point. Now, let's try it. Let, let's just pick a spot. Now, how about if I draw the vertical line right here? It touches the green graph at one point. Let's try another one. Let's draw the vertical line here. 
touches the green graph at one point. Now some students get confused and say, hey, Mr. Weiss, I can draw a vertical line this way. And they say it touches at two points, so it's not a function. This is a horizontal line. That doesn't count. It's just got to it's got to be a vertical line straight up and down. So it's impossible to draw a line straight up and down that touches this graph at more than one point. What do you think about for this last one? Function, yes or no? I'd say yes again, right? No matter where I draw my vertical line, it can only hit at one point. And it's impossible to draw a line straight up and down that touches this graph at more than one point. So the only one that's not a function is this first one right here. And that's called the vertical line test. Well, I hope this helped you with functions. I wanted to take a closer look at it. And thanks for watching the video. Have a great day.